fluids and floating. Questions to ponder. Why do things float? And how can large ships made out of steel float? Let's go back and review Archimedes' principle. Remember with Archimedes' principle, if we had a particular object that we submerged into a liquid here, the liquid would displace. And if we could take the amount of liquid that was displaced and find its mass and then find a, uh, its weight, its overall weight, once we found its overall weight, what we really have also found is the buoyant force uh, acting up on the object. So the weight of the displaced liquid that the object is submerged in is equal to the buoyant force on that object. So the buoyant force on a body immersed in a fluid is equal to the weight of the fluid displaced by that object. If the overall density of the object is less than the fluid, the fluid's density, then the object will float. For example, this uh, big iceberg right here um, obviously has a, an overall density uh, that is less than the salt water, and that's why it's floating. Likewise, this beautiful uh, cruise ship here, um, these don't look like this should be possible, but underneath here you can't see the huge hull that's uh, underwater, and that hull obviously is containing chambers of air and so forth to uh, provide a buoyant force. Otherwise, the steel and everything, which is more dense than water, this would seem like it would sink, but the overall density of the ship here is less than the density of water, so it floats. So let's look at floating. Let's take a uh, particular object here, and this object has a certain density, density object here, and this object also has a certain mass. And obviously, when we push this object down, it kind of pushes back. Uh, its weight is not enough to keep it submerged. The buoyant force wants to push it back up. Uh, when we push it down into the liquid, the liquid rose, and we got a certain amount of displacement there. And that the weight of that displacement uh, is equal to this buoyant force. So the buoyant force here, which is equal to the uh, weight of the displaced water right here um, overall, that is greater than the uh, weight of the object itself. So the point force is greater than the object's weight and it would lift the object back out. So we let it go and it bloop, would come back up and start to float. At this point, we would reach an equilibrium state where the buoyant force is going to be equal to the weight of the overall object. That's key to understand that this volume right here of the object is not the submerged volume. This volume here is the overall volume of the object. This volume of the fluid is the displaced volume up here, this small disk here. And that's the volume of the displaced fluid. So obviously the density of the fluid is greater than the density of the object here, um, but the volume of the displaced fluid here in this small disk is less than the volume of this overall, the overall volume of this object. So notice that the G's cancel here, and what we just explained was true. We kind of have an inverse kind of proportion here. The volume of the fluid, which is smaller than the volume of the object, is equal to the um, density of the object, which is smaller than the density of the fluid. And those ratios are equal. So this is not necessarily what you need to memorize. Kind of more what you need to memorize is this concept right here. And then you can always work this out to see the relative densities and the relative volumes. So in a nutshell, that is floating. And it's pretty cool. This stuff really floats my boat. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, On to a floating calculation. Um, here is a, a little problem for you to ponder and, and work on. So pause the video, give it a shot, and then come on back and after you're done and see how you did. So how did you do? Hopefully it was pretty straightforward. Um, maybe the volume calculations might have been a little tricky here. We'll see how you did with that. But kind of the same process we started with on the other slide, and that is that we have a we have balanced forces when something's floating. The buoyant force is equal to the weight of the object that's in the in the uh, liquid, and we start there and can build from that. So our buoyant force is our density times the volume of the displaced fluid times gravity, and the uh, mass represented as the density of the object times the volume of the object here. Now remember this is the overall um, volume of the object. This fluid displacement is equal to the displacement of the fluid caused by the volume of the object that's submerged. So that's the key here. And of course then multiply by gravity there. The uh, accelerations due to gravity, the g's cancel, and then we're solving for the density of the object. So we divide both sides by v naught, and in doing so here, and I change sides as well, we have our density of, the, of water times the volume of the displaced water, and that's equal to the volume of the submerged block, since only six centimeters of it, uh, it's only six centimeters deep, to find the volume of the um, displaced water, we take the area of the block, eight centimeters by eight centimeters, and then multiply by the amount that it was submerged, six centimeters. So that gave us the 384 centimeters cubed. And then um, divided by the overall volume of the cube. And so when we do that, we get 750 kilograms per meters cubed. And hopefully that makes some sense because uh, three quarters of the block is submerged. So we should have it should have three quarters of the density of water. And uh, that's one quick check on these floating type problems. So now it's time to explore and investigate. So in a second here, pause the video, open a new tab in your browser, and go um, search these two things. The density of ice, this should be fresh water, and then also search the density of seawater. And hopefully after you see these two relative densities, you can conclude for yourself why icebergs float. Parting idea from scratch. Oh, before that though, some questions. Why do things float? And how can large ships made of steel float? Now on to scratch. And keep progressing and continuously improving.